CataractCoach.com. Why did the AC depth increase? Important teaching case, plus a bonus video at the end. Good morning. It's before 6 a.m. I'm already here in the clinic. I'm doing the lens calculations for the cataract surgeries for the upcoming weeks. I like to come in early in the morning because it's quiet, the phone doesn't ring, no one interrupts me. And I found a very interesting case here, which I want to show you. Let me teach you. It's a great teaching point. It's something we've covered before. So here's the teaching point. Now we're looking at some lens calculations for a patient. We're considering the left eye cataract surgery. And we see in the biometry from 2017, the anterior chamber depth is 3.08 millimeters. Well, the patient didn't have surgery then. He actually came back to our clinic now in 2021. But now look what happened. The AC depth went to 3.87. Why? What is the difference here? Now look at the other eye, 3.22. And going back to 2017, 3.46. But why is there so much variability here? Now on the data here, it looks like it's an accurate measurement. All five measurements were about the same in 2017. So what caused the anterior chamber depth to become so much deeper? He still has the same cataract. He's not pseudophagic. And the answer is, the patient had a vitrectomy. He had a pars plane of vitrectomy. And as a result, you can see he went from a 3.08 antechamber depth to 3.87. This is why I tell you, for the lens calculations, in someone who has a prior vitrectomy, I tend to add a half diopter. It's the great clinical pearl. We've discussed it here on Cataract Coach before. I've showed you surgical videos of how to do cataract surgery vitrectomized patient. But remember, that anterior chamber depth is more, you've lost all the vitreous, right? That anterior hyaloid face does provide some support to the lens by the crystalline lens or the IOL. And by removing that, we're gonna have the lens sit slightly deeper in the eye, so a little deeper anterior chamber depth. And as a result, you're better at that half diopter to the IOL power to avoid post-op hyperopia. So my pearl for the day, hope you liked it. And now for the bonus video. In between cases here on a Monday morning in Beverly Hills doing some cataract surgery. And I saw something very interesting. And this is gonna teach an important lesson as to why you have to make your own OR preparation sheets. Let me show you. What do we find out that's unusual? This patient and this patient have the exact same lens, but also even the same axis of alignment. Is that true? So we've checked all the data, checked the charts, looked at the topographies again, and everything checks out okay. So you have to make your own OR sheets like this so you know. Ultimately, the responsibility is that of the surgeons. If there's an error or transcription problem or a duplication error, it's always your fault. So it's so important that this sheet that you see of mine, I made this, I typed it up. I confirmed the number, and today when I noticed that, wow, two people have the identical lens and the same axis, and a third patient has another torque lens with the same axis, is it, are they all really 161 degrees? The answer was yes today, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't double check it and make the list myself. So avoid these errors by being your own boss and taking responsibility because ultimately you are the captain of your own ship and you need to make a sheet like that. All right, take care. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself. What's the name of those forceps?